So Tyson Fury is given the interview to IFL TV where he spoke with Cook and Cassius about his recent fight with Tom Schwartz. And he had a few kind of things to say about Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearn. Because Tyson Fury got some criticism from Anthony Joshua saying that, you know, AJ wished he could come back against someone as easy as Tom Schwartz. And I think it was might have been AJ who said that Tom Schwartz was ranked something like 50th in the world. Now Tyson Fury took exception to that and said, basically no, Tom Schwartz is ranked. And he got the rankings on the WBO out there and said that Tom Schwartz was actually ranked above him in the WBO rankings. Now, first off, I'm going to address both things. First off, the person, I think it was Anthony Joshua, I'm nearly sure I read it somewhere, and he said that Tom Schwartz was ranked something like 50th in the world on BoxRec. Well, BoxRec, just throw them rankings out the window, because they're pretty much irrelevant. And BoxRec's not recognised as a ranking system. They rank their fighters, it's all algorithms, it's all done through computers, you can't go by what BoxRec say. But that being said, you can't go by what the governing body say either. Because to rank someone like a Tom Schwartz at number two in their rankings, that's a damning indictment on the WBO. I know the other sanctioned bodies do it and have done it. I remember a couple of years back, Kevin Bizier. Who the hell was he? He was Kell Brooks mandatory with the IBF. So the governing bodies, they do just tend to rank fighters. It depends on the promoter a lot of the time. Like You'll tend to see... A lot of Bob Aaron fighters and a lot of Frank Warren fighters high up in the WBO rankings. It's normally the way it happens. Same way you, you tend to see a lot of matchroom fighters kind of high up in the WBA rankings because they tend to fight for little like international titles for the WBA a lot. So you'd always kind of see that with the fighters. And Tyson Fury's come out and said that Anthony Joshua, he basically had an easy fight with Andy Ruiz or he thought he did because he saw a fat guy with two weeks to train. Now again, Andy Ruiz was coming off a fight with Alexander Demetrenko, which was I think five weeks before. So he only really finished the camp and then went straight back into another one. I know he came in heavier and not in the greatest of shape, but let's not beat around the bush here. Andy Ruiz, he was, he was ready to go. He was ready to fight. And not long after that, Tyson Fury took digs at Eddie Hearn, as he likes to do often. And he's basically had a go at Eddie Hearn, basically saying that, you know... You fought a nobody, Tyson Fury, you know, Dylan White is this, Anthony Joshua is this. And as Tyson Fury says, pretty much Alexander Usek, Derek Chisora and Dylan White, Anthony Joshua, they're the only heavyweights that Eddie Hearn rates because they're his fighters. He doesn't give other fighters the credit they deserve. I don't necessarily know about that. You know, I do think that Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn, he's obviously pro matchroom because it's his company. He's not going to come out and say Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight in the world because he's not one of his fighters. But he did say some things that Eddie Hearn gets fighters beat. That Eddie Hearn saw Andy Ruiz, saw he was fat and thought, yeah, I'll put him in with AJ, it's a cherry pick. Well, I don't think that that's what Eddie Hearn saw. To be fair, Eddie Hearn's first choice, and even he said it himself, was Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz's team, who he should be firing, definitely firing, because they turned down a $7 million payday to take a rematch with Deontay Wilder. Which, if the Tyson Fury rematch happens, may not happen at all. So Luis Ortiz was the first choice. And his team were goddamn idiots. And they didn't take a career-high payday. Andy Ruiz was obviously the next possible choice. And Andy Ruiz, he's a good fighter. And I think that Eddie Hearn would have known that Andy Ruiz was a good fighter. I'm sure he didn't think he was as dangerous as he was. I'm sure he thought Anthony Joshua would just come true no problem but that's the thing about heavyweight boxing anything can happen and it usually does it usually does especially heavyweight boxing other divisions not so much but heavyweight boxing anything can happen it normally does and it happened with Anthony Joshua and Andy Ruiz Tyson Fury has also said that he expects to be out in October because if the rematch with Deontay Wilder doesn't happen and he said it himself he doesn't know it's all up in the air right now he's kind of letting Bob Arum or Frank Warren deal with that as it is he's saying that He'll be out in October the 5th in Madison Square Garden. And he's expecting Deontay Wilder to be in action the 28th of September. So a week apart. So Wilder has his fight one week. Fury has his the next week. And I imagine they meet in 2020. If the rematch doesn't happen next. If the rematch does happen next. Who would you be picking? Would you be picking Fury? Or would you be picking Wilder? Me personally. I picked Deontay Wilder the first time. I did. I thought he'd knock Tyson Fury out. 
This time around, I will pick Tyson Fury to win. But I definitely think it'll be a competitive fight the whole way through. I don't think it's going to be a school the way most people think. I think Deontay Wilder's always going to be a dangerous fight for Tyson Fury because he lets his hands go. He lets his hands go way more than Klitschko. So I think Tyson Fury, he's going to be a tough fight. Definitely. Definitely for Tyson Fury. But that's the kind of interview itself done. It was a, it was a good little interview with Tyson Fury, Coogan Cassius, as they always are. Most interviews with Coogan's a good interviewer. He really he is. He's a good... I know a lot of people don't tend to like Coogan. Coogan is a good interviewer. He is. So IFL are a great platform. And yeah, that's my thoughts on this. Let me know what you think down below. Go watch the interview. It's on IFL. I'd recommend going and watch it. It's a decent little interview. Have it. Have a look at it. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, I will talk to you after.